Here I'm investigating some plant pest control options. Now when I say plant pest, you may jump to a conclusion and think maybe an insect. Others may think of like a mouse as being a pest. Uh, these are all fall into the same classification of plant pests. Now with any plant pest, diagnosis is important. Knowing the exact uh, pest to the greatest degree of certainty is advantageous because control depends on the problem and which is why proper diagnosis is important. And that could be a small um, micro based and that's going to set the steps into motion for what you're going to carry out going forward so that you're using the resources you have most efficiently. Now, is organic better? We're looking at plant pests. Well, those issues with organic or OMRI or USDA organic, um, those are your typical um, touted as your organic standards. Organic does not mean no spray, so I don't want you to think that just because something's organic doesn't mean it wasn't sprayed with anything. This simply means that products can be applied or from an approved list that is considered to have less harmful impacts on the environment. However, organic growers can still pollute even if they follow these organic rules. So it's just important to keep in mind that knowing uh, the grower, knowing where the food's coming from, knowing where the plant material is coming from is, all, is very important. Just because it's organic doesn't mean, again, that there's no spray. It just means that the sprays are from a more scrutinized list that's thought to be more environmentally friendly. Now, of those sprays, there's two different types. There's a systemic or contact product classification. The systemic circulate within the plant vascular system. So you spray it um, in one area, we see three droplets here, and it spreads internally through the plant. This can allow for a more complete plant protection and, and can uh, suppress disease after it's initially infected the plant. That's an advantage with six systemics. However, because they enter through the plant, these are typically discouraged for cannabis production because it can get into the buds um, and leave internal residues, which when smoked or um, brought to high temperatures can release volatiles. So that's why these are typically discouraged. The opposite of that is called context. They must be applied um, actually to the causal agent. So they must come in direct contact um, or the disease where the disease will start. These products only kill what they touch, so complete and even coverage is important. So if you're um, looking at applying a contact product, it's not going to go systemically through the plant. So in this case, three droplets, if it was a contact, would only kill areas in the three specific areas where it touches the plant. More even control is definitely more advantageous for contact. The advantage is it doesn't offer any residuals in the plant. The disadvantage is it's on the applicator to ensure even coverage. Now, how fungicides work? Fungicides are grouped into their modes of action, abbreviated MOA. Often these are referred to as FRAC codes, and it stands for Fungicide Resistance Action Committee Code. What this basically means is that depending on how the fungicide may work is how it's classified. And this is important for growers to rotate modes of action to reduce the chance of fungus becoming resistant to applied fungicides. If you rot rotate fungicides, but they're the same mode of action, you're really not rotating anything. Now there's biological controls, and this consists of using pest natural enemies to control the pest population. So for example, with white fly, which is a common greenhouse pest, the tiny wasp, that's a natural enemy. Eggs of the wasp can be placed in the greenhouse, uh, populated with white flies, and they will seek out the white fly larvae and attack. So it's kind of a great way to use one insect to help control another. And because you're using a um, insect, it's this be biology, you're using a living organism to control another living organism. Cultural controls are comprised of many practices, but choosing plants that are resistant to disease and insects is important, as they may have natural uh, defenses. So this is where learning a cultivar is very important for an area. Um, knowing what might be more resilient to certain diseases or common pressures is also good information to document. Now for physical controls, we're looking at adding a physical substance, a physical prevention method. This could be perlite, this could be um, sand or rice hulls on the surface to reduce gnats, uh, commonly found on that upper area of the soil where uh, there's a high moisture content. Putting these substances that drain very easily, keep it dry, can help prevent that. Also, physical control could be insect netting, creating a physical barrier between the insects and the plants you're trying to protect. Chemical controls utilize chemicals. It, pretty, it sounds pretty easy reduce, to reduce pest populations. And this includes the pesticides, traps, also sex hormones, as attractants, and plant growth regulators all fall under the chemical control aspect. Pesticides are the most um, dangerous means of pest control in terms of risks to humans and the environment. So just keep in mind that chemical control, uh, be mindful of what particular chemical 
because it can have uh, varying risks to not only the applicator, but also the environment. Lastly, screening cameras for contaminants. It's the number one reason for product rejection is pesticide residue. Limitations for testing is because you simply cannot test for chemicals. Typically, you have to test for a particular chemical that might be suspected to be on the plant. And why are many fungicides forbidden from cameras production? Well, as I mentioned before, because cameras is commonly smoked, uh, that can cause chemicals to be changed into volatiles and, and that can become aerosols, which can change the chemical profile and potentially make it more hazardous. Looking at just the general graph here, looking at the total number of targeted samples of domestic imported foods tested for pesticide residue by the FDA. You can see that overall testing, uh, even food items, has gone down simply because of the sheer volume uh, that it takes and the difficulty to test. But for cannabis, uh, held to a little bit of a higher level, simply because it's not being consumed, uh, there's that chance where those chemicals could be turned into volatiles, which could be more harmful than their um, plain residues if they were just consumed orally. Uh, so just, again, things to keep in mind when looking at different options. You want to be looking at the bigger picture. You don't want to just spray something to control pests. You want to think about the long-term implications to make sure your product uh, is going to pass screening uh, and held to high standards so that there's not a contamination of uh, the product and your potential recipient.